All right, so you look in the mirror this one time, and it's not you looking back. Instead, it's a rather tall, curvy blonde, the type your boyfriend said he'd go after if he weren't, wasn't so darn in love with you. When you open your mouth to speak, it's not your voice, but her voice, and it hits you that you are in just the right position to find out everything. So you call, or better go over and find your boyfriend alone, like he said, but not looking like your, at your picture, like he also said, but leaping through a magazine with girls who look like you do now. His eyes widen and he starts to pant when he sees what you've become. Right there, you were tempted to punch him. But wait, just give him a chance. He invites you in and tells you he's been dreaming of a girl like you and would you like some pie? This is the pie you brought over for him last night when you look like you normally do. <laughs> you finish the pie and wait to see what he's going to do next. All the while, it's been pleasing you to be so easily beautiful. Everything on you symmetrical and making sense. You think of the cab driver on the way over, how he chatted you up and even turned off the meter. And your whole life starts to explain itself right there and then. You've always been beautiful on the inside, just like everyone said. Only now, people are taking the time to look. You have curvy blonde sex with your boyfriend who doesn't put up the struggle you thought he would. When you're done, you leave him in a rumpled bed heap and rush home to your mirror, the one that started it all. When you get there, you've changed back into normal you and frankly, you are relieved. All the men you'd have to deal with, all the sex you'd have to have. The phone rings and it's your lying little slither of a boyfriend. He says he's been thinking of you of nothing but you, even thanks you again for the pie. <laughs> outside you wants to slam the phone in his sorry little ear, but inside you, the one that everyone said was so beautiful, remembers that people often make mistakes and so you decide to give him another chance. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, I may kind of look like a normal person, but really, my mother was a loaf of bread. <laughs> Before she had me, of course, twisted braided hollow loaf, egg sheen on her back, she met my father in a restaurant, Sam, Sam's old time deli on Orchard Street. He was about to tear off her voluptuous elbow when she cried out in fear. My father was startled a little. Hala had always been silent, but then he thought maybe this one has something to say. He smuggled my mother out of there. A waiter who smelled mostly like onion was giving him a shifty eye. Wouldn't you like a doggy bag, sir? He said in his mostly onion way, to which my father said, I ain't got a dog. Later, my father sitting in Washington Square, my mother next to him on the bench, the afternoon sun baking them just a little bit more. My father liked her bready smell and said she reminded him of his childhood in Brooklyn, his mother's kitchen, speckled black roaster pans and juicy chicken. My mother responded mouthless, said she liked his gallant way, how he spoke up to the nosy waiter, how he didn't send her back for a quieter bread. <laughs> Six months later, she was human. Something happened there that they both felt I was better off not knowing. <laughs> They do have pictures, though, of her before it happened, when she was still a holla. My father holding her high in both hands, his eyes and mouth wide open in obvious jest, about to take a bite. 